This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Time right now is 427 here. It's finally Friday. Thanks for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. It is hot outside. You're going to hear us say it again and again. And we cannot stress enough that it is so important to stay safe, not only today, but over the weekend. Yeah, we know as you're stepping out the door this morning, it's already warm out there and it's only going to get worse as that day goes on. So we're taking a look at how people all around central Indiana are staying cool. And we're also looking at ways that you could have some heat related illness some some symptoms that you need to be on the watch look out for today as you're having to head outside so we'll continue to keep you updated on this heat wave but to get all the details we want to talk to Alyssa Donovan and we know we still have another day or two of this yeah as well. so this is day two of four so we're just getting into it right now and we're gonna see those heat index values again today into the triple digits really 105 wow. and Ooh. some areas are going to see even higher with those heat index values that's what we're expecting today so definitely going to want to hydrate stay indoors as much as you can because that is dangerous heat. That's why we do have that excessive heat warning in effect. That went into effect yesterday afternoon and it is sticking with us through Sunday. Now, Sunday is when everything changes. We have unsettled weather coming in and much cooler temperatures to start your Monday. But today, a hot one, 96 degrees for our high, hot and humid conditions. That humidity just hits you as mm -hmm. you step outside. Good news is a little bit of a breeze this afternoon, but really, that's the, <laughs> not that's gonna that's be the very helpful. Not yeah. Really, yeah. Yeah. All right, Alyssa, thank you. Well, we are monitoring that story that has everyone talking. The semi-truck driver that hit that family killed a mom and her twin daughters. And you're seeing him right now being walked. And we're learning more about his charges. Yeah, he will be charged with reckless homicide. He could spend up to 19 years in prison if, in fact, he is charged with this. Uh, we're also looking into why some truck drivers are charged with reckless homicide and others get away with no punishment punishment after being involved in a deadly accident. So we will look into that some more and we'll have more details on what will happen next with Bruce Pollard, that semi driver. Another story we're going to have for you today is a good one. It is Good News Friday, our favorite part of the week. And this has to do with the Shark Tank auditions that we were at just earlier this week. And we met some pretty awesome ladies. We did. These women have extension caps for a cause. You might remember them. They <laughs> make hair extensions that then connect to different hats and caps. Their goal is to make cancer patients feel as normal as possible and just have make life a little easier for them. Well, something really, really amazing happened to them after the Shark Tank editions, and you are not going to want to miss it. It is an awfully heartwarming story. It's a story a lot of people will be able to relate to. So we'll have that plus lots more coming up to kick off your Friday. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. Dangerous hate continues to impact the Hoosier State. Now at 4.30, how local park officials are working to keep your children safe at summer camp. Plus, a woman targeted by an arsonist is talking for the first time. This morning, the message she wants you to hear. And swiped in broad daylight. The warning an Indianapolis woman has for you as you expect your Prime Day packages. Time right now, 4.30 here. It is Friday morning. Thanks for joining us on Good Morning Indiana. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. Alyssa Donovan joining us again and unfortunately we have more hot temps headed our way. It's already hot out there now and it <laughs> only is going to get worse as the day continues. That's Alyssa. right. So we are starting very warm this morning. It's already 80 degrees in Ooh. Indianapolis. So we didn't even see a lot of relief overnight as we normally do. And those temperatures today back into the mid 90s with those heat index values in the triple digits again. So 80 degrees in Indianapolis, 81 right now in Muncie, 80 in Lafayette. So well above average with those morning temperatures. We're also seeing quite a bit of humidity humidity out there. You're going to definitely notice that as you step outside today. What's going on is we have this upper level ridge of high pressure that's continuing to build into the Midwest. What that's going to do today is clear out a lot of that cloud coverage. So we're going to see partly cloudy skies this morning and then a little bit more sunshine as we head through the afternoon and those clouds are cleared out by that ridge of high pressure. That's also going to bring us that hot and humid air that's continuing today. We have that excessive heat warning in effect today went into effect yesterday 
yesterday, and that is lasting through the weekend until Sunday evening. So this is a long stretch of some dangerous hot temperatures. Heat index values expected to be up to 110 at times, which is why you definitely need to be aware of what's going on outside and stay indoors and hydrate as much as you can. Today, we're starting in the 80s at many locations, climbing into the mid 90s this afternoon with a lot of sunshine and those heat index values in the triple digits. Alyssa, thank you. We're going to take a check at traffic right now. This is a look at I-69 north of I-465. Looks like just a few cars out there this morning. Now we're going to take a turn to I-65 at 30th Street. A little bit more traffic in that area, but no issues to report at this hour. Once again, a reminder, a lot of construction going on right now, so just good to be aware of that going on on our interstates. And here at 432 with temperatures again expected to soar into the 90s and heat indexes in the triple digits. Kids enjoying summer camps at any parks locations will spend a lot of time indoors. Staying safe in this weather is a priority. Counselors are trained to look for signs of heat exhaustion. Kids are keeping hydrated by either using water bottles or using the indoor water fountain. Now campers even use a buddy system to make sure that they're looking out for each other and parents they're encouraged to remain vigilant whether at home or at the park. I say staying in the shade, but then also just, just kind of knowing your body. And if you're a parent, you know, kind of watching out for your kids and making sure, again, I think that staying hydrated and then kind of watching out for maybe the children as well as some of the older adults, just, just to make sure that everyone's doing what they can to kind of stay healthy when it's this hot. So we have to bring water bottles and snacks and, um, yeah, we brought lunch in a cooler today. Well, if you do have to go outside, it's key to know the signs of heat-related illnesses, dizziness, too much or too little sweating, skin abnormalities, pulse changes, and muscle cramps, all things to look out for. We do have all the symptoms posted for you in the RTV6 app. It's a crime we often see during the holidays. Packages snatched from driveways and doorsteps, but it happens year-round, and you should take some extra precautions if you're waiting on a delivery following Amazon's Prime Day. RTV6's Graham Hunter talked to an Indianapolis woman who found out that it doesn't matter what's inside the package. Porch Pirates are looking for any opportunity to walk away with your stuff. I was expecting my delivery to come today. Molly Preston was tracking her latest Amazon delivery. It was protein powder, an iPhone case, and a pop socket for my phone. Taking advantage of two days of sales from the online retailer. Things that didn't really need, but there was deals on them, so I got them. The package came earlier than she expected. So this morning I was checking to see where the package was or when it would be delivered, and it said it was delivered yesterday. That's when Preston checked her security cameras. It showed that someone was taking the package. At first, the man in blue walks by, but 42 seconds later, he has second thoughts. I was pretty angry, more so that it, I felt violated. Walking back up to Preston's porch, covering his face, he takes Preston's package and heads back the way he came. Definitely, I would like to catch this guy because I'm sure I'm not the only one that's experienced this. And she wants to make sure it doesn't happen to anyone else. I just want to make sure that people are taking the right precautions um, and also making people aware of this man that's taking other people's belongings. Now she'll be switching up her routine. So I probably won't get things delivered here anymore. Um, I can probably just get them delivered to a friend's house or even to my work. That's something that doesn't sit well with Preston. It kind of baffles my mind that we're living in that day and age that we have to alter where things are shipped. Reporting from downtown Indianapolis, Graham Hunter, RTV6. Well, Preston tells RTV6 that she gave the surveillance video to police. If you think you know who the man is trying to hide his identity from that camera, please call Crime Stoppers. Indianapolis Metro Police still need your help identifying the man seen in these surveillance images. Investigators say he has started multiple fires on the north and northeast sides of the city. Police say one of those fires was started in the early morning of July 2nd at Aaron Grauman's home. Now Grauman is sharing a message for the community asking anyone who might know who the suspect is to come forward with information before someone gets hurt. It's very concerning um, because, you know, I, I don't know what uh, the motivation is from this individual, but um, obviously the concern is that, you know, if there is a next time, somebody's not going to be as lucky as we all have been. 
She's also encouraging people in the Heron Morton neighborhood to check for any surveillance footage that might have captured the suspect. If you know anything, please call Crime Stoppers. At 436, a dummy hand grenade sale gone bad ends with gunfire in western Indiana. Police say 40-year-old Colt Cooley shot another man outside of his West Terre Haute camping trailer. According to court documents, the man visited Cooley to sell a dummy hand grenade for 30 bucks. That's when Cooley reportedly got mad and complained about a previous drug deal gone bad. Police say that Cooley shot the man in the forearm. This morning, Cooley faces aggravated battery and criminal recklessness charges. Detectives believe the bullet remains lodged in that victim's arm. A deadly crash remains under investigation this morning in Montgomery County. State troopers say the three-vehicle crash happened on State Road 47 west of Crawfordsville. Authorities say 66-year-old Paula Martin of Rockville died as a result of injuries from the Thursday morning crash. Two other people were also injured. Their injuries are not life-threatening. At 437, Hiring Hoosiers is our commitment to provide you with jobs, resources, and training. Indiana's Department of Workforce Development and K-12 are focusing on even younger students, giving them exposure to the world of work and careers here in the Hoosier State. As part of the Job Shadow Week, online schooling students got a first-hand look at the job application process during a job fair at the Hawville Library. Organizers say the program teaches students about the diverse options available in Indiana's job market. There's plenty of things out there and then they can't, don't have to be cornered um, in any type of specific job that they have. There's, you know, the world is their oyster. Well, this week, students also attended a job etiquette seminar and shadowed workers at Cummins in Columbus. They worked on resumes and also their elevator pitches to win over potential employers. The firestorm over a racist chant at a rally held by President Trump continues to grow this morning. After the break, how one of the Congresswomen targeted by the chant is vowing to fight back. And your next flight could have new life-saving tool. Which airline is adding a drug to combat opioid overdoses? Alyssa. And that extreme heat continues today. We are under an excessive heat warning because of those heat index values climbing into the triple digits. I'll tell you how long this is going to last and when we'll see some relief coming up. Ed Martin Toyota. The only name you need to know. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana, 441 on your Friday. Here's a live look at I-65 and State Road 334. Just a heads up to drivers on the northwest side on I-65 heading southbound there on the interstate as you get here to the dog leg. You'll want to watch out because we still have those lanes closed southbound I-65 between I-865 and I-465 and an off-ramp closed at Whitestown Parkway for construction. President Trump says he felt a little bit badly about his North Carolina rally crowd breaking into a send her back chant. As ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi reports, Republicans grappling with the phrase, senior leaders say he has no place in the U.S. This morning, President Trump trying to distance himself from a chant that erupted at his last campaign rally, directed at Congresswoman Ilhan Omar. I was not happy with it. Uh, I disagree with it. Uh, but again, I didn't say, I didn't say that they did. This was the moment Wednesday night when the crowd began repeating, quote, send her back as Trump criticized Omar. Omar has a history of launching vicious anti-Semitic screeds. The chant playing out for 13 seconds, the president telling ABC News he tried to stop it. Well, I didn't like that they did it, and I started speaking very quickly. But as you can see, as the crowd grew louder, the president paused, looked around, and didn't continue his speech until it died down. As the president repudiated his supporters' behavior, he fell short of saying that he would stop them going forward. Well, these are people that love our country. I want them to keep loving our country. Meanwhile, supporters of Omar expressing solidarity as the lawmaker returned to her home state of Minnesota. It is really great to be home. And offering this message to her constituents. I know there are a lot of people that are trying to distract us now. But I want you all to know that we are not going to let them. Many GOP leaders also publicly condemned the chant without denouncing the president. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy said it's, quote, unfair to hold the president accountable for the words of his supporters. Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, Washington. 
It is 444. Jeffrey Epstein will stay in jail while he waits to go to trial. Federal judge made that call yesterday. The 66-year-old multimillionaire faces multiple charges accused of sexually abusing dozens of underage girls. His lawyers made a case to allow Epstein to stay on house arrest in his massive Upper East Side mansion. But the judge agreed with prosecutors who said that Epstein was an extreme flight risk. Prosecutors provided what they called overwhelming evidence that he was likely to flee in a safe in a safe in Epstein's home, they found $70,000 in cash, several loose diamonds, and an expired fake passport. Boeing is taking a major financial hit related to the grounding of its 737 MAX jets. The grounding comes after two deadly crashes involving the planes in the last year. The company said Thursday it will record a $4.9 billion after-tax charge in the second quarter related to the grounding. That charge comes out to $8.47 per share. The aerospace giant is set to report second quarter earnings next week. The 737 MAX, Boeing's best-selling jet, was grounded in March after one of the planes crashed in Ethiopia, killing everyone on board. Music to no one's ears, but played on repeat in a place that no one would expect, a waterfront pavilion in West Palm Beach. That's the hit YouTube kids song, Raining Tacos. It's playing over the loudspeaker at Lake Pavilion in West Palm Beach on a loop alternating with the equally annoying song, Baby Shark. All night long, park managers say the homeless people are not being specifically targeted here, but one homeless man says he doesn't believe them. It's mind control to get rid of the homeless. And I speak now as a homeless person. Where are we going to go? Officials say they are playing the music from 11 at night until 7 in the morning. So far, the music hasn't stopped people from sleeping around the pavilion. They are resilient. Yes, they are. I don't are. think I could sleep through that. And it won't be raining tacos out of the sky here in central <laughs> no. Indiana. It no. is just going to be feeling a little hot sauce-like, I'd yeah, say, Alyssa. Yeah, hot sauce-like. That's good. That's a good way to describe it. That's right. Temperatures today are climbing into the mid-90s again. We are in the middle of this heat wave that we've been talking about this week. It started yesterday and it is sticking with us until Sunday. That's why we do have that excessive heat warning in effect. We also have a few spot storm chances as we head through the weekend. And then behind that, that's when we really start to see some relief from all of this heat. We are back into the low 80s on Monday. So that's the good news. We just have to get through the next few days here. Right now, starting very warm and humid across the area. It's already 80 degrees in Indianapolis. Those winds are light out of the southwest, nine miles per hour. Kokomo and Bloomington, both at 79 degrees. And we are starting a little cloudy this morning across central Indiana, and that's just that system moving out of the area. We are going to see those clouds move out as well. So we're going to start cloudy, and then we'll see partly cloudy skies by midday, and then we'll see more sunshine as we head into the afternoon. Mostly sunny skies just as we're hitting our daytime heating, and those temperatures reach their highs in the mid and upper 90s across the area. So it is going to be a warm day, a sunny day by the time we hit the afternoon, so just increasing clear as we head through the day. All of that is due to this ridge of high pressure in place that's continuing to amplify, bringing us that hot and humid air that's going to stick with us today, tomorrow, and Sunday. By Sunday afternoon and evening, that's when we are going to see a system move in to bring us some showers and thunderstorms. Today, by noon, those heat index values in the triple digits at many locations. So that means by the afternoon, when we hit that daytime heating, we are going to climb even more. We're going to see those heat index values up to 100 105 at some locations. So that is some dangerous heat, which is why we do have that excessive heat warning in effect for all of Indiana as we head through today, tomorrow, and into Sunday. By Sunday afternoon, we are going to see some of that humidity die down, and we're going to see a change in those forecasts. Heat index values up to 110 at times, though, over the next few days. So stay inside if you can, and be, uh, continue to hydrate the best you can as well. Here's a look at our weekend forecast. Very hot on Saturday. We're going to see a lot of sunshine, keeping those heat index values high. By Saturday night, we could see some convection, a few chances of pop-up thunderstorms in there. Better chance of seeing some of those thunderstorms on Sunday. That's when we have a cold front starting to move in. That's going to bring us those chances of some activity. And then it's also going to take our temperatures way down as we head into Monday morning. We are into the 60s to start out Monday morning and only reaching the low 80s for the first half of the work week. So only a few more days of this extreme heat in the forecast. Good
good day to get out to the pool. Mostly sunny skies, heat index values up to 105. A little breeze comes out of the southwest by this afternoon, but you're hardly going to notice it with this heat we're seeing. So today, 96 for the high, 97 on Saturday. Then we're back into the lower 90s on Sunday. That's when we see showers and thunderstorms move in. Cold front passes through Monday, taking those temperatures back into the low 80s. Alyssa, thank you. We are keeping a close eye on some construction, slowing down traffic in the southbound lanes of I-69 through Fishers. This is a live look at 106th Street. You can see the arrow board there shifting people out of those two right lanes. So just use caution, expect some delays as you're heading through Fishers this morning. We do want to take a turn though. This is a live look from our in-dot traffic camera in Beach Grove, I-465 at Emerson Avenue. Right here, traffic is moving smoothly. We'll continue to keep a close eye on the roads and keep you updated on any issues. Delta Airlines says it will begin carrying a medication that reverses overdoses after the fact. The company made the decision to carry naloxone after a passenger tweeted that a man died aboard one of its flights. The passenger reportedly passed out in the bathroom with a needle in his arm during a flight and flight attendants, a doctor and passengers could not save him. Delta says naloxone will be available in emergency medical kits starting in the fall. United Frontier and Alaska Airlines already have naloxone available on board their flights. Lights. A ball of fluffy white fur is confusing tourists in Maine. Ahead this morning, we're taking a look at the rare, adorable fuzzball. Plus, new numbers released this morning show how the opioid epidemic is impacting Marion County. We're breaking them down for you coming up all new at 5. But first... I'm Vinny Politan. Today on Court TV, our coverage of Florida versus Grant Amato continues. We are in jury selection. It is winding down. We've got live reports all day. It's a death penalty trial where a man is accused in the deaths of his mother, father, and his brother. That's on Court TV today. And don't forget, you can watch all the new Court TV live on your mobile device by visiting CourtTV.com. Stay with us. It's 451. We'll be right back. Jetta, Tiguan, and Select Atlas models. Welcome back. It is 454. We're taking a live look right now at I-69 at 106th Street. There is some construction in this area, so just be cautious as you head that way. Expect some delays once rush hour picks up. Meredith, thanks. It is 455, and a white ball of fluff is crawling across the lawn and it had visitors in Maine confused. So this is what the visitors saw outside of the museum on Tuesday. At first, folks thought it might be an albino skunk or a groundhog, maybe. Maybe. After asking Facebook users, a furry visitor was ID'd as a rare baby albino porcupine. The baby is still fluffy because it's too young for the quills to harden. The museum is asking the public to help name this little guy in the running so far. Tribble, a Star Trek nod, Marshmallow, Snowball, and Herb after the volunteer who discovered it. That is awfully cute. That is cute. I like Snowball, I think. I agree. It looks like a good name for Little that guy. Snowball, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, the world record for the largest nut bush dance has been broken at the Big Red Bash Outback Music Festival in Birdsville, Australia. The festival allegedly beats its own record set last year, which had 1,719 participants. According to the Guinness World Book of Records, the dance is a line dance performed at a Tina Turner song, Nutbush City Limits. Must All be right. an Australia thing. Yeah. I don't know that one. Neither do I. <laughs> well, here's a story about a chance for you to feel like one of the Brady Bunch. HGTV kicked off a very Brady contest on its website this week. The network will allow seven fans of the Brady Bunch to live in this home featured on the program for a whole week. The network bought the home in Studio City in a neighborhood in Los Angeles last year. And then several HGTV stars, including Indie's own Mina Starziak and Karen Lane, renovated it to match the show's interior. Now, to enter the contest, you have to submit a video explaining why you should win a week-long stay. Fans have until September 11th to upload their videos. Ooh, I was a big Brady Bunch watcher so on was TV. I. So was I. I yeah. loved Brady Bunch growing up, especially Marcia, as, an, Marcia, Marcia. Yeah. as an only <laughs> child. That was oh, my yeah. dream to have five siblings. All the siblings. So, yes, yeah. But not, not a 
a brother that threw a football at my nose and well, broke no, it. No. Yeah, not that. We'll but, submit videos yeah, later. We yeah. should, absolutely. <laughs> all right, Alyssa, let's take a look at the weather. So extreme heat today. We're gonna keep talking about it all day and that's because this is dangerous. Heat wave in effect, 96 for our high today. Those heat index values, that's the main concern, are going to be into the triple digits. So that's what it's actually gonna feel like as you step outside. Chances of showers and thunderstorms move in Sunday and then we get some relief as we head into the work week with those temperatures back into the low 80s.